Hello everyone, Sebastian here, and welcome to another episode of the MATLAB and Simulink Robotics Arena. In today's episode, we're going to talk about programming robot swarms using MATLAB and Simulink. So today's agenda is as follows. We'll first detail the general workflow for designing uh, robot swarm behavior. And then we're going to dig into two software examples, one with MATLAB and one with Simulink. And then finally wrap it up with some key takeaways. So the workflow is as follows. Let's say you create robot behavior using MATLAB or Simulink. MATLAB being the modeling language for textual programming and Simulink and some other tools like Stateflow with the ability to program your robot behavior graphically. And we'll see some examples of both of these cases. Now within the MATLAB and Simulink environment, you can then take advantage of simulation so that whatever behavior you prototype, you can then test it with this uh, simple simulation and maybe do some refining of your algorithm before you're ready to target some other environments. Once you want to get the robot behavior out into a different environment, you can take advantage of code generation. So you can automatically generate, for example, C or C++ code from MATLAB code or Simulink models, and then get things like libraries, standalone code, executables to plug in to external frameworks, like software environments like ROS, external simulators, or even robot hardware. So without further ado, let's go into the software demonstrations. We'll first start with the MATLAB example. So I'll open this script here. Now, what I'm using here is what is known as the mobile robotics simulation toolbox that our team has created. So let me just run the script and then explain what's happening. If I maximize this, you'll see that there are going to be 50 robots that are navigating an environment. And based on the index of the robots that they're detecting, they're going to get into five clusters uh, or five different teams of robots. So for example, if I close this, you'll see again that I'm creating a multi-robot environment with 50 robots. And at some point throughout my code, I define a number of teams. So I have this set to five. If I change this to three, for example, I can rerun the script. And you'll see that now there are going to be three clusters of robots that are generated from the same code. So this simulator is fairly simple, but it gives us the ability to just test our behavior and see if it complies with what we wanted. Now, the way that we've done this is that throughout the main execution loop, if I just scroll down, at some point, I'm going to refer to an external function called swarm team controller. So this is a textual or a way to implement your robot behavior using MATLAB code. If I select this, and I'm just going to open that controller function, you'll see that this implements the individual behavior of one of those 50 robots, where I'm looking at the robot's individual pose as well as it, the robots that it detects in the environment. And based on what it sees, it will figure out whether it should move forward, move backwards, turn left or turn right based on this textual logic. And with the simulation, I was able to then verify that behavior and replicate this function to be used by the 50 different robots in my script. So now that I have this function, Swarm Team Controller, maybe I want to target a real robot or an external simulation environment. So what I've done here is I've pre-configured a MATLAB Coder project. So for MATLAB Coder, I can define my entry point function as this Swarm Team Controller function that I've just created. If I go through the workflow, I can then also define a script that will run this function and infer the different sizes and data types that my uh, code requires. For example, in this case, it's determined that my vector of robot poses is 3 by 50. That is x, y, and the angle for each of the 50 robots. And similarly for other uh, inputs and outputs that my function might need. I can go through this process, optionally verify this, which I'll skip for now. And then finally, configure some of the code generation settings to generate, in this case, standalone C code from my function. If I hit generate, you'll see there's going to be a building process. And at the end of the building process, I can view a report. This report, if I expand it, it actually lets me trace the code so between MATLAB and the generated C code, for example, as I scroll through my MATLAB code, I can hone in on this if statement and select the location in the generated code where this occurs. 
Similarly, for example, if I'm using the utility function that converts velocities coordinate frames, I can see the equivalent code to do the matrix multiplication in C. So now this is going to be standalone C code that I can use uh, in other environments. Let's now look at the Simulink example. In the Simulink example, I will open up a graphical model. I'm also using the Mobile Robotics Simulation Toolbox, but in this case, the Simulink blocks that come with it. So I'm defining a multi-robot environment and then three individual robots that have uh, simulated LiDAR sensors to avoid obstacles. As you see here, there are now three robots and their LiDAR scans are sometimes hitting into walls. And based on some logic that we've implemented, the robots will choose to avoid the obstacles or continue going straight. And of course, you can also simulate the robots detecting each other with these LiDAR sensors so that they also don't collide with each other. So this is another good way that you can verify things in a fairly simple environment before even touching real hardware. So if I stop the simulation, the basic behavior here is actually contained in state flow, which is a graphical way that we can program state machines. So actually, if I go in here and run the simulation from state flow, you can then see as the simulation is running, I can track the state of all of my state machines to see whether the robot is going straight, turning left, or turning right. So this is a good way of just graphically debugging or checking that your behavior is implemented correctly. And of course, at any point, you can pause the simulation and then step forward or backwards and do some debugging if you'd like. From these graphical tools like Simulink and Stateflow, you can also generate code. I'm gonna show you how to do this with an external environment. And to do this, I'm gonna jump over to my Linux machine. So you see a Simulink model that's similar. It's got a Stateflow chart and a couple of driver blocks that I implemented to call into an external simulation environment when I generate code. Uh, this is the Stateflow chart. Uh, it has a similar behavior where the robot can go straight, turn left or turn right. So now if I generate code, there's going to be some automation here that generates a standalone code from my model, which I can navigate through. In this case, as you see in the header file, I've created a class that contains a couple of methods that I'm going to apply in my external environment, as well as the C++ source code that contains the translated or auto-generated version of the code of the state flow chart that you see on the left. And this also lets me navigate between the, the graphical model and the code generation report. So now that I've generated the code and done a little bit of automation, I'm just going to compile this to my external environment. What I'm using right now is an open source swarm robotic simulator called Argos. So now deployed the state flow chart that I showed you, and you can see it running on the Argos simulator. Now the robots are flocking and avoiding each other. So that was it for the software demonstrations. I hope that gave you a little bit of a feel for some of the things that you can do to program swarm robotics in MATLAB and Simulink. A couple of key takeaways then. There are several modeling languages like MATLAB for textual modeling and Simulink and Stateflow for graphical modeling that you can use to prototype this robot or agent behavior. We showed it where all the robots behave the same, but nothing stopping you from doing heterogeneous behavior as well. Within MATLAB and Simulink, we have certain tools like this mobile robotics simulation toolbox we've created that you can use to test and refine your behavior with a simple simulator. And then finally, with tools like MATLAB Coder, Simulink Coder, and Embedded Coder, you can target external software and hardware by generating standalone code and potentially automating some of that uh, build process as well. So if you have any other questions or ideas for how to program Swarm Robotics multi-agent systems with MATLAB and Simulink, feel free to reach us via email or Facebook and make sure you check out some of our other resources. Thank you.